The most recent supernova in our Milky Way galaxy has been located, 140 years after it exploded. NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory and ground-based radio dishes discovered the remnants of the supernova known as G1.9 plus 0.3. When it exploded 140 years ago in the middle of the Milky Way, it couldn't be seen optically because it was obscured by the surrounding dense gas and dust. Today, G1.9 plus 0.3's expanding remnant is detectable in X-ray and radio waves by Chandra and a ground-based array of dishes. We're standing right beside the Saturn V rocket in Huntsville, Alabama. Meteorologist Sam Champion hosted a series of live reports from the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville for ABC's Good Morning America program. The two-hour-long network show highlighted the Saturn V rocket as one of the seven wonders of America. The scientists that live in this... Designed and built at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville in the 1960s, NASA's Saturn V powered the Apollo missions to the moon. ABC calls the Saturn V rocket, quote, the embodiment of America's spirit of ingenuity. In June, the Smithsonian honors NASA's first 50 years, the search for space phenomena. Ulysses comes to an end. A down-under data gatherer helps Cassini astronomers. And new wheels from NASA. The Smithsonian is honoring NASA's 50th anniversary by featuring the agency in this year's Folklife Festival, an annual event held on the Mall in the nation's capital. NASA, 50 years and beyond, includes visual presentations, hands-on educational activities, and exhibits that explore the space agency's past and future missions. The Folklife Festival is a celebration of cultural traditions of communities across the United States and around the world. The festival features exhibits, concerts, movies, food, and lectures over a 10-day period. In addition to NASA, the Smithsonian is spotlighting the state of Texas and the country of Bhutan. The Space Philharmonic, under the direction of Emile de Kuh, launched the festival with its performance of Holst's The Planets at the National Museum of the American Indian. Former astronaut Mae Jemison helped narrate the concert. NASA imagery was projected onto the museum's wall behind the players. You are now free to move about the cabin. The Space Philharmonic also performed the score of the new Disney Pixar movie, WALL-E, about the last robot rover on Earth who finds true love with a new robot named E. Liftoff of the Delta rocket carrying blast, a gamma ray telescope searching for unseen physics in the stars of the galaxies. NASA's Gamma Ray Large Area Space Telescope began its high energy mission with a successful liftoff from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. Gamma rays are the highest form of energy in the universe, with millions of times more energy than the light we see with our eyes. Glast will allow scientists to better understand what causes and powers black holes and other mysterious high energy phenomena. What we see when we look in other parts of the electromagnetic spectrum is very different from what we see with our natural eyesight. And that by building instruments to aid, our using our brains to build instruments to aid our natural senses, we're able to learn so much more about the universe. A NASA European Space Agency mission to study the sun's poles is ending after 17 productive years. The Ulysses spacecraft was launched in October 1990 aboard Space Shuttle Discovery. Propelled towards Jupiter, Ulysses eventually settled into a permanent orbit around the Sun to explore its heliosphere. Originally designed for five years, the mission lasted more than 17. The vast amount of data Ulysses returned changed how scientists view the Sun and its effect on the space surrounding it. An amateur astronomer in Australia is helping NASA with information he's collected about a storm on Saturn. Backyard stargazer and retired miner Trevor Barry, who lives in the small town of Broken Hill in western New South Wales, first noticed the storm in February. He's been sending pictures to University of Iowa scientists and NASA researchers ever since. And this was just another night of imaging Saturn. And when I processed the images, there was the barest hint 
of some structure, a white spot. Barry's observations are supplementing data collected of the storm by NASA's Cassini spacecraft that's orbiting Saturn. I'm now involved with NASA. Can you believe that? Technology designed by NASA for the Apollo program is providing independence for a Texas teenager. Matthew Swinton of the Dallas suburb of Southlake is confined to a wheelchair by muscular dystrophy. A system developed by NASA for its Apollo lunar rovers allows Swinton to get around in his own modified minivan. Rather than a steering wheel and pedals, a joystick lets Swinton turn, accelerate, and brake his vehicle. A touchscreen computer provides additional options, like blowing his horn. Watch it, buddy! Swinton is thrilled. His newfound independence is linked to NASA's first program to send astronauts to the moon. A recent high school graduate, Swinton will attend the University of Notre Dame in the fall and plans to drive to South Bend. One giant leap or roll for mankind. In July, Ikana helps firefighters in the field. Servier's creator honored for groundbreaking work. Thousands celebrate the mysteries of Mars. And a 25th anniversary tribute to the first American woman in space. NASA's remotely piloted Ikana aircraft has flown over much of California to help fight more than a thousand forest fires burning in the state. The NASA-developed autonomous modular scanner aboard the aircraft is capturing visible light, infrared, and thermal imagery of the wildfires. The images are transmitted through a communication satellite by Ikana to the Ames Research Center, where they're integrated into Google Earth Maps for subsequent use by firefighters in the field. The real leap that we've made here is, is getting the right data in, in near real time. You know, telling them where the fire fronts are, where they're moving, and, and you need that information within minutes so that they can make decisions about where to put people on the ground. Ikana is a Predator B aircraft adapted for civilian research and is based at the Dryden Flight Research Center. Marshall Space Flight Center Earth scientist Daniel Irwin has received the Charles S. Falkenberg Award for groundbreaking work using satellite imagery. Irwin created an unprecedented monitoring and visualization system that's shared among scientists, scientific agencies, and governments in Central America and the Dominican Republic. Called SERVIR, to serve in Spanish, the system has harnessed Earth imagery from space to help disaster responses to hurricanes, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, algal blooms, and other crises across Central America. Irwin is now working to build similar systems and international collaborations in other developing regions of the world, like East Africa. The award is named for Charles Falkenberg, a noted computer scientist who advanced techniques for collecting and visualizing Earth and environmental science data. He, his wife, and their two young daughters lost their lives when American Airlines Flight 77 crashed into the Pentagon on September 11, 2001. The Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum in Washington celebrated Mars Day with tens of thousands of visitors interested in exploring the mysteries of the Red Planet. Museum goers participated in a variety of activities, such as maneuvering a small robotic rover, studying the latest images from the Red Planet in 3D, and operating a robotic arm. These are robotic arms, so what they can do is they can move the joints on the robot arm back switching um, each component on the controller, and she's going to release the block into the cup. So it's a pretty good idea of what it's like to control a robotic arm in Mars. Visitors also had opportunities to talk one-on-one -on -one with scientists about recent Mars missions and discoveries. The public is really fascinated with Mars. They always have been. This is a way for us to show all these exciting new discoveries, the Phoenix Lander, for example, the Mars rovers, and all of those sorts of things we can bring to the public and explain to them how things work. This is Phoenix's robotic arm, so it's a lot like your arm. It's got a shoulder, and it's got an elbow, and it's got a, a wrist down here with the scoop. We take the sample and program it to come and deliver the sample to one of two instruments on the deck. The Goddard Space Flight Center celebrated the 25th anniversary of the first American woman in space former astronaut Sally Ride. You know, when I was a little girl, I always dreamed of flying in space. 
and 25 years ago that dream came true. And it's through your hard work and your imagination, your creativity and your dedication that all of you will be able to reach for the stars and achieve your dreams too. The event kicked off a three-day educator conference called Earth Then, Earth Now, Our Changing Climate, which focused on understanding climate change in the 25 years since Ride's historic shuttle flight and what changes are predicted over the next 25 years. The conference was sponsored by NASA, Sally Ride Science, NOAA, the National Science Teachers Association, and the Department of Energy.